Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to George Mack Plays the Classics. Big time thanks to Konami for releasing Castlevania on NES. Here's a great game that I have plenty of memories of as a kid. You are Simon Belmont and your quest is to destroy the curse of the evil Count Dracula. Always at your side with your trusty magic whip, which upgrades into a morning star. Crack your way through 18 stages of undead enemies as you make your way to the master of the castle. Simon, walk left or right. You can also jump up, left or right with the A button. He can also crack his whip in either direction with the B button. Simon's greatest weapons, however, are the special weapons he can find on each level and unleash with up plus the B button. The dagger flies straight ahead to eliminate enemies at a distance further than the whip can provide. The axe is a powerful weapon that shoots in an arc. The watch stops time for three seconds so you can pass a tough area. The firebomb, holy water, that burns enemies and leaves a fire on the ground for a moment. And the cross boomerang that flies forward then comes back towards Simon. In order to use your special weapons, you need to collect hearts. Hearts, as well as weapons, money bags, and other items are hidden in wall lamps strewn about each stage. You can also occasionally get drops from killing enemies, which can make all the difference. A couple power-ups that you think would be helpful but aren't are the Invisibility Potion, which gives you a few seconds of invisibility, and the Cross Pendant, which clears the screen of enemies. Unfortunately, they are placed in lamps that are in less than useful places. A couple super helpful power-ups are the Double and Triple Shot. These allow you to use multiple special weapons at a time. And don't forget the pot roast! Healing life is always helpful when you find them. Simon starts stage one outside Dracula's castle and works his way through. Every three stages is a boss. The phantom bat guards the entrance to the castle. He's easy with the axe. You then move on to the chapel, which introduces everyone's least favorite enemy, the flying Medusa head. These constantly spawning flying heads will be the bane of your existence. Until you figure out not to panic, they'll knock you back at the worst time, typically into a pit. The boss here is the Queen Medusa. She's not that hard if you've got holy water sitting around. Next up is the castle Skywalk, featuring the annoying flea empty, crows, and plenty of jumping over bottomless pits. The stage ends with a fight against two mummy men. These guys are a pushover if you have to hold water. You can stand on the platform and rain fire down. Then you get dumped into the catacombs of the castle and have to fight your way up. The eagles that carry fleas can be quite annoying. You have to watch out for the skeletal dragons connected to walls. You finish this stage grouping off against Frankenstein and Igor. Again, these guys are super easy if you still have the holy water. You're on to the last two stage groupings. The first looks to be the castle's dungeon with corroded cell doors and skeletons. Next, you have to worry about black knights who throw axes and take several hits to kill, and red skeletons who crumble when you whip them, but quickly come back to life. The boss here is Dracula's good friend, Death. I had a ton of trouble with Apparently I was bad with holy water. I tried later with the axe and was finally able to kill him right away. The last area takes you through Dracula's clock tower. Lots of eagles carrying fleas in close quarters to annoy you. The final battle is against Dracula himself. He has two forms. The first appears around randomly and you only have a quick moment to attack his head before he throws a few fireballs. This first fight took me forever. Until I decided to stop relying on the special weapons, take my time, and whip him, then fireballs. He hits you for a quarter of your health, so you don't have a lot of room to make mistakes. The second form is a pushover with the holy water that is provided for you in the left lamp. You stun him with the holy water and then whip him to death. Then the castle collapses and you're treated to the credits. Great play. Want to keep going? Well, you can start again and keep going. When it comes to grading Castlevania on Nintendo, graphics get a 3.5. The graphics are great, if a bit dull on the color front. That's the only knock I could give. Sound gets a 4.0. The first 4.0. 
Konami really knew how to craft great sound very early on in their NES development. Gameplay, it's a 3.0. Gameplay is great, but has room for improvement. If Simon could turn around and jump and whip behind him, that would be amazing, as well as whipping up, down, and diagonally. Difficulty gets a 3.5. This is a great level of difficulty for a game. My only real knocks are the Medusa heads, which are incredibly cheap, especially when you're young. Fun Factor gets a 4.0. This is a game that you can go back to time and time again. Overall, Castlevania gets a 3.6 and earns an A-, and is the best game on NES up until this point. It's gonna take a while for this to be dethroned, I think. Go play this now! That's gonna do it for me for today. Please make sure to like this video. Please subscribe to Head Drop Productions, because I want you here for each and every video release we have, because it is your destiny.